Hello YouTubers and fellow hams. Well, we've got a repair today. This is an ICOM IC2710 dual band mobile radio. And the complaint is that the uh, power output is intermittent. Or he said zero. He, he, he was talking on it and he said it just quit. Uh, the uh, previous owner, or actually the, the person using it gave this report. The owner of the radio says that uh, he thought that it uh, had uh, died, power output was dead years ago. So apparently it's intermittent. I've got it hooked up uh, here on the bench, got my meter and a dummy load on it. And uh, fan comes on when you go into transmit mode, which is normal behavior, but we're not getting any power out. And I had power a minute ago, and I did a little percussive maintenance and got it to go in and out. So I'm thinking. Yeah, we're not getting we're not getting power at all now. We were a moment ago, so it's oh there it is. Oh there we go. There we are, uh, 30 watts. Is that 30? Yeah, no, that's a uh, okay. That's about 10 watts. I'm on the 30 watt scale. Oh, now we don't have power. It's going into transmit mode, but we're not getting power. So it's uh, I can see the needle jump a little bit. I think we got an intermittent connection. I have a theory. I think that we're going to find a cracked solder joint when we get inside the radio. So uh, that's all we've got. W9TE repeater. Okay. Well, it receives all right. <laughs> so anyway, ICOM IC2710 intermittent power. Well, let's open it up. Well, I got the board out of the radio. Um, the way this was put together was kind of interesting. The uh, the board sits down in the chassis, right? The chassis is a solid block, and this is your heat sink, basically. The whole thing's a heat sink. Um, it's a couple of connectors, but the uh, only tricky part was the uh, SO239 connector comes in through the back chassis here and is soldered directly to these little extensions here off the board. So you had to desolder the uh, SO239 and then take a bunch of screws out and the board just lifts out. Now, I've been looking at it with a magnifying lens and uh, I don't know how well this is going to show up on camera. I really need a microscope. Let me uh, see if I can get this where you can see it. Well, it might be visible, it might not. These are the final amplifier modules, power amp modules, um, and they each have, you know, a few wires that come down to the board. <coughs> this is the UHF module over here, and this is the VHF module over here. Looking at these uh, solder connections under the magnifying lens, they're quite dirty, and this one is has got a slightly visible crack around the outer edge of it between it and the pad. So I think that this has become intermittent here. Over here on the UHF side, this one has a, a defined ring around the uh, wire where the pad, the solder is different. Uh, you can see those, well, I can see it. I can see it under the magnifying lens, but there's a little circle of a difference in the solder around the pin. So there's a little ring there where it's cracked and come loose. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get the soldering iron heated up and uh, I'm going to reflow each of these connections. These are the ones that get hot, you know, because heat from the module comes down this wire and uh, that heats that area. So I'm going to reflow each of these solder connections on each of these power amp modules. And then we'll put it back together <clears throat> and we'll see if our power is consistent at that point. I suspect this is going to take care of it because uh, this connection in particular Looks like it's lifted off the pad, like the solder has just given way, probably from being so hot, and it's crusty around it too. You can tell where the uh, the heat comes down. So that I think is what we're going to have to do here. Flipping the board over and looking at the other side where these pins come through, um, the pins come through the board and they are have are engaged with pads on this side which then further the circuitry. And over here on the VHF side, this one, I hope you can see this where I'm pointing, 
Um, the pin comes through and it's got a little ball of solder on it, but there's almost none making to the, uh, in fact, it doesn't even look like it's making to the uh, copper on this side. So um, this, uh, this, this didn't get soldered well at all at the factory. This might be our, our main problem right here too. So after I reflow it and heat it on the other side, reflow it, after I heat it uh, on the other side and clean that side up, I'm going to flip the board over and I'm going to redo them on this side too. There's another one over here on the UHF side that's just a little ball of solder where the, on the pin that didn't really make out to the, the uh, solder pad. And these barely have some coverage. That one looks like it's barely making contact, if at all. Uh, this one this one looks okay. That one's yeah, it's halfway. But this one right here is it's got more flux around it than solder. The solder's just on the wire. It's not even making to the pad. So that could be our problem there, too. So the soldering iron's almost heated up. We'll uh, redo these solder connections and then we'll get the radio back together and we'll see if that resolves our issue. Okay, those look a lot better now. That really bad one is the uh, ground, apparently. So that would make sense that it would just drop power if it lost ground. Much better. Alrighty. Those look much better. Now, let's go to the other side. There we go. That's much better. <sighs> let's see, here's the one that's, I think, the main problem. Okay, now we're making good contact to the solder pad. That is almost certainly going to end up being the issue. Yeah, a lot more even. Alrighty, good. Now we got to do is put her all back together. <sighs> yep. So we've got four screws that go down through here, through the heat sinks on the PAs, and basically lock them into the big metal back cover. All right, now the SO239. Really not too bad getting this board out of here. Um, kind of annoyed that I had to desolder the SO239, but uh, I guess it's only one thing that you have to desolder. So that's not terrible. That's that. Plug in the fan. Put the uh, strain relief for the power cord back in place. Now the speaker. The speaker, well, okay, we've got to get this guy in here. That's the uh, release extension for the little RJ45 jack that the microphone's on. That's a little push button that lets you push down and disengage that. The speaker actually has these clips and this clip is what holds this IC against the chassis and is actually a heat sink for it, or the pressure that keeps it heat synced. There we go. 
so that that clip holds this chip against the side of the chassis. <laughs> Speaker connection. And then the top cover, which has only one screw that holds it on. It, uh, it's got a couple of little tabs that go up underneath the front here. And it's a pretty tight fit. Uh, there we go. Very tight fit. All buttoned up. All right, let me get it hooked up and we'll give it a test. All right, we've got it all back together. Got it all hooked up. And uh, there's our uh, 10 watts out, low power. And it's pretty steady. I couldn't get it to hold power for uh, this long before. I've uh, keyed it down several times. I've uh, been sitting here holding the key down for over a minute. Might as well warm her up a little bit. And uh, actually the owner is just now calling me on the radio over there. <laughs> KB9RLW. Yeah, I'm just sitting here testing the uh, the uh, ICOM after finishing the repair. Oh, that's interesting. Let's cover that first. Uh, was it simple? All right, Ed. Yeah, I was uh, actually sitting here uh, keyed down into the dummy load the entire time we were talking, and uh, it didn't hadn't dropped power at all, and I couldn't get it to hold power for more than about uh, 10 seconds before, so uh, I think we definitely got it resolved. All right, Ed, we'll talk to you later. KB9RLW, clear. All right, so uh, I had the radio keyed down uh, into the dummy load pretty much the entire time that I was talking to Ed there. He's the one who uses this rig, and it hasn't lost power at all, and I've rattled and tapped on it, and uh, yeah, it's just staying there, 10 watts nice and clean and solid so obviously it definitely was those solder connections and we have got a good radio again so another repair successful thanks for watching if you enjoyed the video don't forget to give it a thumbs up also if you're not already a subscriber click to subscribe join us on the Facebook channel for discussion about the videos and if you'd like to help support this channel please click to support me on my patreon page